We are here with a UFC featherweight Antonio Carvalho. He will be in action this coming Saturday at the Bell Center in Montreal. Uh, quickly becoming your home away from home here. Two fights in a row here at the Bell Center. It's like deja vu, isn't it? We're, we're back. Um, yeah, I wasn't expecting to come back, and uh, here I am. Uh, you go back uh, to November. Uh, I've never seen a man so critical of himself after a performance, a victory, no less. Um, it, was that a hard fight to get over for you? I mean, even in winning, I mean, you seemed to re really kind of down on yourself uh, after your performance. Was that something that, you know, once you got home and sat down and maybe rewatched, it was like, you know, maybe not your best performance, but a win nonetheless? Uh, I'm still grateful for the win, but um, I still feel the same. Yeah. It doesn't change, you know, it, I, I don't know. Can't, I can't change the way I feel about that fight. And uh, if anything, it just makes me want to prove a lot more uh, come Saturday. Was there some pressure you put on yourself coming off the Calgary show with uh, such an impressive knockout uh, going into that fight in November? Or was it just uh, was it another fight for you? Um, I, I think I did as much as I kept telling myself that wasn't the case. Yeah, well, it did, did kind of it was in the back of my head. So um, I, I did let it get to me, I you know. I couldn't mimic that same thing that night. It just would, you know, every fight's different, and uh, it's. I knew that, that that you know, subconsciously I knew that wasn't going to happen. But for some reason, I did let it get to me a little bit. And uh, as the fight would go on, I I was getting frustrated with myself, um, and in a sense that uh, I don't know, I could have done so much more, you yeah. know. And, and that that's the way I felt. I still feel that way. So, did you watch that fight afterwards? I watched it once just to just to look at it, and honestly, I, I looked at it in a sense that I wanted to make sure that in my heart I still felt I won, despite uh, I know you know one judge called it for him, and I, I just wanted to see it for myself the way I felt. Even after the fight was that I was disappointed, but I still was like, you know what, I think I did enough. Still, I did more than he did. I think. Uh, that being said, I wanted to see it again, and then when I watched, it, I said, you know what, I I'd say I, I took at least the two two rounds out of the three, and and uh, I'll take the win just not happy with the performance fighting somewhere like the bell center where you're talking about 18,000 people when the fight begins is that a factor at all is it just that you are in a you are in a fight zone at that point where it doesn't matter if it's five people or 18,000 or does that change things uh, from a mental perspective I'm just curious I think it, it can yeah it depends I, I mean I've had times where it's I maybe have let it get to me and I've had times where it doesn't it all depends on on how I feel that night and uh that's something I got to figure out. Uh, I mean, right now it's 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 kind of all familiar. Right now, it's this yeah. is like we're going through this process again, same place, same spot, um, same annoying guy with the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, you guys are. That, that's after the interview, are, believe yeah. me. Um, you got Darren Elkins on Saturday. This guy has just been on a tear since uh, cutting down to, to 145 pounds. Um, very very tough fight, but one that uh, where there is most risk is most reward for you. Absolutely. Yeah, he's got a lot to lose, man. It's um, he's on a four fight win streak. I mean, I, I didn't think it's funny because they I got the name and I said, oh, that's an interesting name. Mm -hmm. I didn't expect to see someone's name like that. And, and I felt that he was way ahead of me. And I, I still think he is. And, uh, you know, goes to show you that he's just a fighter who wants to prove himself. I, I think, you know, it's funny because I, I, <laughs> I ended up reading one of his interviews and I just realized that he how self-aware he is, too, about where he stands in the division and, and, and what he needs to do. And uh, he's very much like me in that sense. Like he's well aware of that, you know, decision wins sometimes don't cut it. And he knows that. And despite I, I think he's very impressive regardless. I mean, look at the, the opposition he's fought. Um, tough guys. And he's always been very dominant, and, and I have no complaints as far as the way he fights. But he puts that kind of pressure on himself, too, to finish. And, and uh, I think that's what he's going to be looking to do against me. And I'm going to be looking to do the same against him. I think we both know that in order to make some sort of statement, we both have to be impressive. And uh, hopefully that's going to, you know, basically make a really great fight for the fans because sure. that's really what it's all about as much as I can go back and – and, and, and think about all the, the technical issues that I may have had during my fights. I mean, it really is about the fans. And, and uh, I always say, you know, I, I, for me, this is my craft. I, I have an appreciation for it, and, and I want to I demonstrate my technique. But at the same time, it's, it, I, I can't forget the fact that it is a spectator sport, and people are paying, and people are here to watch fights. And, and if it comes down to it, I have to be willing to come forward and, and fight. When you uh, look back, uh, that same card, uh, 154, back in November, Darren Elkins was on that card. He was fighting uh, Steven Seiler. Did you get to spend any time with, with uh, Darren Elkins, uh, or were you guys kind of separate uh, during that card, whether it be in you know, some uh, locker rooms or workout areas? Or 
any interaction with Darren, essentially? No, no, I actually didn't. Uh, you know, besides the the weigh-ins where we're all in one spot, I didn't really get to talk to him. But I, I remember specifically because he was the first fight out the gate, so I I, I was in the arena and. Um, I remember watching him fight, and, and just uh, Matt Riddle was actually in there too. And I remember making a comment. I said, "Wow, this it's just the pressure this guy puts on, and he's just so dominant." And uh, and uh, yeah, it's it's kind of crazy. I'm making all these comments about how I I, th I was very impressed with him and his performance, and and just watching him continuously break Siler down. And and Siler's an impressive guy too. And uh, I was making all these comments, and, and here we are now. I'm going to have to fight him. There you go. You were doing some instinctual scouting there that you knew would come in uh, helpful a couple months later. Uh, the featherweight division, to me, it's just so stacked right now. I mean, do you kind of uh, get caught up looking at the giant picture as a kind of just tunnel vision on one fight at a time and that hopefully the, the wins will kind of yield your name into that upper echelon? Yeah, I mean, the bigger picture is, always just a, is it's a dream. It's, it's, you you want to be considered whether it's the best or one of the best in, in, at some point in time. Absolutely. I mean, that's always in there somewhere. It, it's, it just goes to show you that, you know, all the hard work and time and effort that you put into your craft sort of has come together and you're recognized for, for, for being good at what you do. Um, I think that, you know, for every fighter, I think that's what they want to a certain degree. Um, but, yeah, I don't, s I, mean, <laughs> I don't know where I stand in the featherweight division right now. There's so many good guys. <coughs> um, and it depends what the UFC wants to do too. You know, I, it, I'm just a guy that's here and I've, I, I've said it many times, man, I'm, I'm way beyond where I ever expected I'd be and I'm just here and um, I got to learn to enjoy myself a lot more. I really do. And, and, and that's the hardest part, man. I, 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 me being hard on myself, that's something else that, that I have to learn to deal with. And uh, I don't know. It's just, you know this is part of part of this whole journey is my journey. It's 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 something for me and and uh, it's kind of weird because it's kind of out in public. Do you know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> it's got to be very uh, difficult. I can imagine that you you know you're someone that is, you know very honest with it, kind of this struggle that I th I don't think people like us always kind of take into account the fact that you know this is there's so many moving parts to this business of being a fighter. There's so many different ways that you have to, you know, whether it just comes to posi positioning yourself to the public and such, and that, it, do you kind of have a solid team around you where you can really be open about these things and kind of deal with the day-to-day the -day stresses, so to speak, uh, that comes with this? It's a gigantic spotlight on, on some of you guys, and, you know, it's it, job certainty is, you know, every performance is kind of your job evaluation, so to speak. It's got to be, uh, I don't think the stress is sometimes taken into account a lot of the times by people that aren't in there absolutely you're 100 percent right and 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 that's it and going back to all the people that are around me I, i'm that i think that's what you know keeps me around yeah uh as much you know i just love doing martial arts but i also love to compete there's that side of me that no matter what i always you know i have to get through all these obstacles things that sometimes i'm not as comfortable doing just to get to that point and i'm okay with that because i really do want to get in there and perform and do my thing and, and do what i love to do uh, it, certainly all the people around me that, that are with me, that support me and, uh, their belief in me so, sort of guides me and, 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 and sort of gives me that energy and, and th that I want to succeed because, you know, all these people put so much time and effort into me that, that it, it would be a disservice to them if I didn't try hard to do well. Well, it's a very it's very interesting. You you come across really as as a perfectionist, and that really sometimes uh, separates a lot of people. Would that be an accurate statement? You're someone that you know. It's uh, I find myself I will watch something. It's like the slightest error. That's what I focus on. Are you kind of similar? Absolutely. You know, it's it's like a microscope. Anything you could do ten things right, mm -hmm. and you're gonna focus on that one thing that you do wrong because you want to fix it, and it just seems like it's just this big deal. And maybe it's not, but I mean that's just part of being a perfectionist. It's part of you know, I know lots of guys that are like that, lots of professional athletes, lots of, uh, you know, in anything they do in life, sure. they're like that, right? And, and I think that to a certain degree, you know, anyone who's successful at their craft is like that. I think you have to be a little bit like that. you got to kind of be nitpicking on, 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 on the little things to in order to, to achieve sort of that, I guess, that, that perfection that doesn't really exist. But, you know, we try. You're a fascinating individual, Mr. Uh, Carvalho, and we are going to see you in action this Saturday, taking on Darren Elkins in featherweight action.